So we're here in Ardrossan and we are delivering this lovely Halberg Rassi 36 from Ardrossan in Scotland um, down the Irish Sea around Land's End to Portsmouth in the south coast and obviously one of the most important bits of equipment um, besides the sail and the hull is the engine um, and we always do engine checks before we uh, leave anywhere so we're going to go through the engine checks this morning and run through the systems on the engine and see what it's all like. We've got a lovely uh, 55 horsepower um, Volvo engine on this boat. It's uh, in a lovely dry compartment, quite difficult to get into, but we'll get in there and do thorough checks. The RYA teach an acronym which is really, really good for remembering the things you need to check. And I always use it, and it's wobble. Um, the first part starts for water, and there's two parts of uh, two, two parts of water, the sea water and the fresh water. The first thing to check is the through hole seacock that brings in the sea water uh, through the hole. So let's have a look at that. You can see here we've got a pipe going out through the hole. It runs to the engine uh, to the water pump and you can see the red handle is in the off position which is at 90 degrees to the pipe coming through the hull so if we turn this so the handle is up in line with the pipe the seacock is now on and you can follow the line of the water coming in and see where it goes to the heat exchanger um, it goes up through here to the strainer the other part of the water is a fresh water this boat doesn't have a expansion tank, it has a header tank on top of the engine. So let's take this cap off and be very careful. You push them down and turn them uh, 20, 30 degrees and then, and then they, they pop up. Um, and to check the water level in there, if you can see in, you should be able to see the water. It should be quite near the top, probably an inch down from the, the top of the neck of the filler. If you can't see it, sometimes you can't see the engine, you can stick your finger in it. And this one's full, so that's nice, and you can see into it, so that's good. And you can see there's uh, engine coolant in there, so it's got antifreeze in it. You can see the colour of it, sometimes blue or sometimes red. Uh, by the way, you shouldn't mix them. If it's got blue in it, don't put red in it. If it's got red in it, don't put blue in it. Uh, so there you go, that's the water. So we've got seawater and fresh water. Uh, let's move on now to oil, W-O oil. So let's check the oil. Find the dipstick, it's always got a brightly coloured top. This one's around the other side of the engine. Here it is. And I always recommend you note where it comes out before you pull it, because there's quite often you're reaching around an engine, you'll quite happily find the top of the dipstick, pull the dipstick out, and then when you go to replace it, it's down a dark hole at the bottom of the engine, you can't see it. So have a look where it comes out and take the dipstick out, put it all the way out, and then clean the dipstick off with a bit of kitchen roll or tissue and then put it back in make sure it's seated nicely down in the neck of the um, filler indicator the dipstick and push it in and then pull it out so we've got a top mark here and a bottom mark and it's a few millimeters off the top which is very good should be up to the top or just near it and then place it back make sure it's seated down properly that's the oil um, so the next bit, B, for belts. So let's have a look at belts. The access to these belts in the front of the Halberg Rassi, you have to take the companionway steps away and then go in through a panel to get to the front of the belts. And we've got two on here. We've got two alternators and two belts. So the important thing about belts is the condition they're in. Um, have a feel of it. You know, are the uh, teeth of it still in good condition or is it worn and it's important the width of it have a look at the side of the belt is it shiny and worn and likely to slip or does it still look like it's got some good rubber on it um, so have a look at the condition of both belts feel them with your fingers and then the other next important thing is the tension of them so are they tight you shouldn't be able to turn a belt around more than more than 90 degrees. 90 degrees is a good turn on the belt. So get hold of the belt and turn it around 90 degrees and that's a good tight belt. The other thing you can do is you can push the belt in towards the pulleys and see how much flexibility you've got. Um, 
Uh, we always carry spares. I wouldn't go to sea without them. Uh, they are a thing that do break, especially if a boat's been sitting around for a while and they can get brittle and they do break. Um, let's have a look at the bilges. And let's have a general check around the engine when you're looking for things. It, if I come to a boat and the bilges have uh, got oil in them or water in them, I make a, a, you know, take a great deal of effort to, to clean them out, dry them up. And uh, you need dry bilges in a boat because you can't see if anything starts leaking. Uh, if you've just got a sloppy oil in the bottom of your bilges, you can't see when you've got a leak. So dry it out, get some kitchen roll. These are absolutely dry, lovely bilges. Have a look all around the bottom. Um, see if there's any drips of oil or drips of uh, hydraulic fluid or, or um, coolant. You know, coolant's very quite obvious to spot because it's pink or blue most of the time. And uh, see if you've got any water ingress anywhere. So the L is for levels. Um, it's just a reminder to check the levels. We've done the oil level with the oil and we've done the water level with the water. Um, so what else could we check levels? We've got to check the gearbox oil level. Some gearboxes have a nice plastic um, top to them. Uh, they've got a little dipstick you can see quite often they're yellow. They're quite easy to get to and quite easy to turn and take out. You unscrew them uh, anti-clockwise and take them out have a look at them, they've got uh, indicators on them, give them a clean, have a look at the condition of the gearbox oil, make sure it isn't white and milky and creamy, if it's white, milky and creamy you've got water ingress into the gearbox and that can be a very serious problem. Uh, when you reseat the dipstick don't screw it back down, um, just put it in and sit it gently on the hole that it came out of and that will that'll give you the right level. should be nice, uh, should, it's, uh, uh, not quite like engine oil, it's a little bit more like hydraulic oil, a little bit thinner than engine oil, so it should be in good condition, the oil looks clean, which is good. Uh, take the dipstick out, give it a wipe, it'll have a top and bottom indicator, and it should be up to the top. Uh, if it's not, uh, read the manual, get the correct gear oil, and top it up in the same hole that the dipstick comes out of. So the next part of the wobble, and the end of it, is E. Uh, e stands for exhaust and when you start the engine up to check the exhaust is flowing water out of it. Uh, it's a really important thing I do on every single boat I do. Uh, do all the pre-engine checks, uh, come up onto the, into the cockpit, um, go through with the crew how to start the engine, how to stop the engine, which is really important. Every crew member knows how to start and stop the engine. And when we start the engine, everybody will check the exhaust water is coming out so we know where it is we know what it sounds like we know what it looks like can we see it and it's something to really to keep a, uh, an eye on if you get no engine water coming out there's no cooling water going through the boat and your engine's going to overheat so it's a regular check it's something to keep your ear on all the time keep your eye on and there's the engine checks uh, very important job to do